down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, let me remind you again that when you're traveling or downtown shopping, or when motoring or golfing, there's nothing like having a flask of Horlicks tablets along. They're really great for helping ward off hunger and fatigue. When you begin to feel tired or hungry, just dissolve a few of the tablets in your mouth. They'll nourish you while you work, keep you going at top speed when you aren't able to eat on time. When you're traveling, they often prevent sickness because they're so easily digested and nourishing enough to take the place of other food. Children love Horlicks tablets, too. They can easily carry a supply to school with them, and Horlicks won't spoil their appetites. They're too wholesome and quickly digested for that. You can get handy flasks of tablets at your dealers for a dime. Or, if you prefer it, you can get them in larger sizes in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When Lum planned the fake kidnapping of his old friend Abner so that he could pretend to have rescued him and thereby regain the respect of his fellow townsmen because of his bravery, he had no idea how well the plan would really work. Since Abner has been returned safely, Lum is the hero of the hour in Pine Ridge. Even those who had turned against him because of his connection with the sale of fraudulent silver mining stock are now singing his praises. As we look in on his house today, we find Dick Huddleston has just dropped in to congratulate him on Abner's rescue. Listen. Oh, nothing much. Been sitting around the house here all morning working on this story for the newspaper. Uh, what story is that, Lum? Why, the newspaper in there at the county seat called up right early this morning wanted to know the particulars about Abner being kidnapped, so I told him I'd just write the story up myself and send it to him. Mm -hmm. I figured me being the one that rescued him and all, that I ought to be able to tell it better than they could. Yeah, sure. Then he's right smart of a job to get up something like that, you know? Eh? I bet it is. Yeah, I've wrote it and tore it up five or six times, and I don't know yet where I got it to sounding right or not. I don't want to leave nothing out, of course. Oh, well, I imagine it's all right, Lum. But uh, read what you got there. Let's see how it sounds. Well, I sort of hate to read it. Might sound like I'm bragging a little on myself, but of course I had to tell a fact. You know? Why, sure. Well, nobody knows what you wrote it yourself, anyway. Well, that's what I figured. No. Let's yeah, see. I start out, uh, for the headlines, big letters clean across the top of the front of the page I've got. Lum Edwards risks life to rescue friends. Well... And then right under that, I've got some more headlines. It says, Pine Ridge Justice of the Peace and President of the School Board wins battle with kidnappers single-handed. <laughs> How's that sound? Oh, that's all right again. Then I start out with the main article here. Lum Edwards, prominent uh, citizen of Pine Ridge, made a hero out of himself Tuesday when he defied death and waded through shot and shell to rescue a friend from a dangerous band of kidnappers. Mr. Edwards is a graduate of Cloverleaf School District number 186 and is a leader in the social and civic affairs of the community. <laughs> he is a half-owner and president of the new Roland Grocery Store, which is now operating in Pine Ridge. He also owns 57% of the stock in the Great Western Sterling Silver Company. He is Justice of the Priest and President of the School Board. Mr. Edwards is very modest and does not like to talk about what he done, but in a statement to the press he said, quote, reckon why they always say quote first before they go ahead and say what they're going to. Well, that just shows uh, what they said. Oh, I see I know they always say that before they start talking, yeah. so they can tell when they're starting, I reckon. Yeah, that shows where their conversation starts. Mr. Edwards says, quote, I only wish I had two lives to give to my fellow man. And that's all I've got so far. <laughs> How does it sound? <laughs> well, all right, I guess, Lum. The only thing, you haven't told him who it was kidnapped. Huh? Well, you didn't mention Abner's name at all. He was the one that was kidnapped. Granny, that's right, ain't it? No, sure. I sure never. I thought there was something I was leaving out there. Why, well, yeah, that's what the newspaper would be interested in. Yeah, well, I can put that in there down here at the bottom. Let's see. Say, the man that Mr. Edwards risked his life to save and return to the arms of his loved ones was his old friend and partner, Abner Peabody. <laughs> that ought to keep it all right. Yeah, well, I have an idea they want to rewrite the story anyway and change it up some. 
You've given them enough of the facts there to where they can make a story out of it. Well, now, they better not change it up too much. They'll ruin the whole thing. Just about put a batch of stuff in there about how long Abner was held a prisoner and how they treated him. And... Yeah, and a ransom note and all that. Yeah, that's what I say, about your stuff that wouldn't nobody be interested in. Well, I never have got the straight of this thing yet, Lum. Uh, how did it all take place? Why, I uh, just, uh, how did what take place? Abner's rescue. Oh, that. <laughs> well, I rescued him myself. I was the one that done it. And you hear that? Yeah, sure, I know you did, Lum, but I mean, how many men were there in the gang that had him? I've heard all kinds of different stories about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've been circulating all sorts of stories, ain't That's they? the reason I want to get the straight of it. Now, how many men in the gang? Well, uh, how many did you hear? Well, Sister Simpson told me there were eight. Yeah, yeah, that's how many there were, eight. But Uncle <laughs> Henry Lunsford said she told him there were six, and Miss Phillips, Luther's wife, said you told her four. Well, I'll be dead blank. It uh, just shows how things get exaggerated. They all couldn't be right. You know that yourself, Dick. Oh, well, uh, where was Abner all that time? Why, he was with the kidnapper. <laughs> yeah, but where were the kidnappers? Well, they was with Abner. See, the whole bunch was right there together. <laughs> I mean, what place, Lum? Where about? Where about what? Where about was their hideout? Well, sir, now there's a funny thing. <laughs> I never had saw that place before, and I don't know yet where I was at. I doubt if I could ever find it again. Wouldn't know which direction to start out looking for it. Well, uh, what kind of a looking place was it, Lum? Uh, Dick, let's don't talk no more about it. I, I get to thinking about it, what a terrible fight I had, and I get so nervous again. I think I'll see that thing in my dreams. You know, there's a song run sort of like that. Uh, I'll see it in my oh, dreams. Well, howdy, Abner. Come in. Sure glad to see you. Hello, Abner. Uh, I thought I heard somebody a hollering in here. No, I was just a singing. <laughs> glad you come over. You can just join in with me. Start that, uh, cut down the old pine tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you better pitch me, though, Lum. Oh, yeah. Do, re, mi, fo. Do, re, mi, fo. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the time. Well, right? I expect I better be going, fella. Oh, sit down. Sit down, Dick. We'll sing some for you. <laughs> well, thank you, Lum. I expect I better get back to the store. Well, I'm glad you come over and come back again. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Come down and loaf with me when you get time. Yeah, we will, Dick. Come on. Granny's, I'm sure glad you come in when you did. What's the matter? Why, he just about had me cornered there. Cornered? Yeah, he got to pinning me down on this kidnapping. You mean him and you were fighting? No, no, ask me a batch of questions about the kidnapping. He's the inquisitiest fella i ever seen in my life. I don't know where the kidnappers had you hid all that time and all that stuff. I don't know what to say. Why, I was right sure at your place all the time, huh? Yeah, but I couldn't tell him that. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Sure. We've got to figure out some place away from here. You don't know any place out here in the mountains that might be a good place for him to hide you? Well, let's see now. We've got to decide on some place so that we can both tell the same story. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, how would that old, uh, that old sawmill set uh, Levi Whitten used to have up there in Eagle Gap be? That'd be a good place. Nobody never goes up there. Yeah, that's the place. That's the spot right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Recollect from now on you was hit at the old Levi Whitten sawmill set there in the Eagle Gate. Yeah, yeah. In the boiler room. Uh, in the boiler room, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, why couldn't I have thought of that a while ago? I couldn't think of nothing. No? Uh, how come you never went over to the stockholders meeting this afternoon, Mom? Huh? What stockholders meeting? Why, they're having a meeting of the stockholders of a silver mine. I allowed you know about it. No, well, well, been right here on the place all morning. Never heard a word about it. Well, they called up over at the place and told Elizabeth that they was going to have a meeting at 2 o'clock. But I never went. That's a fine howdy-do. Me owning 57% of the stock and don't even know when to have a meeting. Fine way to treat somebody that just made a hero out of themselves. Well, uh, maybe it's another one of them secret meetings that they've been having on where they don't want you there. Well, they're just wasting their time, I can tell them that. I own 57% of that stock, control and interest. My grannies, I'll be again anything they decide to do over there. That'll learn them how to leave me out of their meetings. Well, I don't blame you neither, Lom. I'd feel the same way about it myself. You're a stockholder just the same as they are, and they ought to let you know whenever they're having a meeting. Yeah, they can keep me from being president, all right, but they can't keep me from having a control and vote in the company. I'll tell them that. 
Here I went to all the trouble to figure out a kidnapping so as to make a hero out of myself, and this is the thanks I get out of it. Yeah, law me, I figured now that they'd all back in a good humor with you from the way they've been talking around Well, you. I did, too. Everybody's been awful nice to me. Yeah, I know that. my face. Yeah. But now they turn right around and had another stockholder meeting without inviting me. It just looks like a man ain't appreciated in his hometown. Well, I wouldn't stand for it a minute. I just wouldn't do it, Mom. Granny's I ain't. I'd stand up for my life. I'm going to start having my own stockholders meetings and running things to suit myself. Why, sure. Just leave them out for a while and see how they like it. I'll stand behind you. I know that I'll go to your meeting instead of that. That's what I'll do. Wait a minute. Somebody at the door. Come in. Well, howdy, Grandpa. Yeah, howdy, boy. <laughs> howdy. How are you? Come on in, Grandpa. Did you go to the stockholders' meeting? Yeah, that's what I come over here for, Alarm. I, I was trying to a committee of one to read a resolute we passed over a while ago. To read what? A resolute. Well, what's a resolute? That's yeah, something they, they voted on and passed it a while ago. Oh. Well, you can just save your breath. I don't want to hear it. No, oh, sir. Me and Lum is again anything that they done over at that meeting today. Well, I've got it here. I'm supposed to read it to you. Well, I told you I don't want to hear it, Grandpa. I own 57% of the stock in that silver mine, and I'm throwing every vote I've got again, whatever it is. Yes, sir. Now, just get on out of here, Grandpa, and leave Lum alone. He knows his right. Well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. I like you'd want to hear about it, Lum. The resolute was uh, brought up apologizing for the way they've been treating you around here and uh, wanting to make you president and general manager of the company again. Wait a minute, Grandpa. Don't pay no attention to what Abner says here. And from here out, Abner, when I want somebody to leave my house, I'll tend to it myself. Sit down, Grandpa, old boy. Now, go ahead and read that resolute, or uh, whatever it is. <laughs> I allowed you know what I was joshing about being a guinea. You can always depend on me to stand right square behind the stockholders and anything they decide to yeah, it looks like Lum is again to be entrusted with the management of that great silver mining project in which so many Pine Ridgers are interested. One thing more, ladies and gentlemen, here's a suggestion for that weekend party you may be planning. Try serving Horlicks with some of your favorite sandwiches. You'll be surprised what an interesting change this makes. A change your guests will appreciate, too. They'll much prefer Horlicks to the usual tea or coffee because Horlicks is so delicious and refreshing. It won't interfere with the bridge game, either. It's so easy to prepare. All you have to do is to add sufficient of the powder to water or milk, mix thoroughly with an egg beater or other mixer, and it's ready to serve. You don't have to add milk or flavoring unless you desire it. Remember this next time you're entertaining friends. Give them Horlicks for a delicious welcome change. You can get Horlicks in either natural or chocolate flavor, whichever you prefer. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at this same time.